All right. Well, my name is Keena McKern. I live in Stone Mountain, Georgia, which is outside um, of Atlanta, one of the suburbs. Um, my daughter, Kendall, was born um, in 2011. So we had a lot of interaction with early intervention very early on. Um, Kendall was born with cerebral palsy. Um, in the beginning, her diagnosis was actually HIE because she had a stroke in utero, which is a shortcut of saying that she had um, a stroke in utero or that she had lack of oxygen, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. So we were introduced with um, intervention probably from day one. I remember um, I have a really good friend who we have been friends for years before either of us had children and we were both blessed enough to have special needs children and I think Kendall, I don't even know if she was a month old at that time. It might have been right around, actually, she probably was a month old. It was pr probably right around the time she came home from the hospital. My girlfriend sent me down and she said, look, you have to be the CEO of Kendall's company. Kendall was like a company. You have to represent Kendall and be her voice because she doesn't have a voice of her own. My daughter is um, nonverbal and non-ambulatory. So I, I took that to heart. Um, I just have a strong work ethic, and it was something that I could relate to. So from that point forward, I wanted to make sure that the relationships that we had with um, intervention with the school system were collaborative. I wanted to make sure that we had Kendall's best interests in mind so that the decisions that we made together were going to be for the best outcome of Kendall and also for other children. Um, kind of got into the advocating role just simply because there were so many parents who needed the resources, um, maybe not have been comfortable asking for them. When you have a special needs child, you spend a lot of time in doctor's appointments, therapy appointments and sessions, and we would have our little um, waiting room groups. <laughs> the moms would kind of have, we would have our own little party in the waiting rooms. And as different parents would talk and talk about different issues they may have been experiencing, I would carry around, which I still carry around today, a, um, a pamphlet, um, a pack of pamphlets for different organizations. And I would provide those to parents or, I would, you know, get them suggestions, say, hey, why don't you try um, this conversation when you have your IP meeting? Or why don't you see if you can have your coordinator attend that meeting with you? And initially, I didn't even really look at it as leadership or advocating. I looked at it as being able to be there for someone else that was it walking that journey that I'm walking, or maybe they were a little bit behind where I was and I was further along in the process. And I remembered how I felt at that point. And I just wanted to make sure that other people felt empowered. I think a lot of parents may be um, just fearful. Um, they aren't as comfortable speaking in larger audiences or presenting in front of people, or they just simply don't know that if my voice is heard and whichever way I present it, it means something, or it can affect another child, it can affect another family. Um, I think sometimes families are just fearful or, or they're just simply not sure. They don't know which avenue to take. Um, they don't know who to talk to or how to present the information so that it is received. And then sometimes I think families just feel like that it, it doesn't matter. That they feel like their voices won't matter and won't be accepted. I think one of the one of the things that may make that work difficult is that from the family aspect, this is personal. It's a personal mission. It's a personal purpose. From the program standpoint, it's business. Um, so they're looking at it from two different perspectives. And sometimes that can cause a conflict or the family member may feel like their voice is not heard or not understood or they're delivering 
the information with so much passion and so much emotion that somehow part of the effect is, effectiveness of that message is lost. And from the program standpoint, they're thinking about the business aspect of it and not looking at the personal involvement with it. And if both sides could understand each other's perspective, I think it makes it a little bit easier to collaborate and be effective. And you have to also keep in mind that families can be very overwhelmed depending upon what stage and where they are in their process and just the the nature of their child's diagnosis. They can be very overwhelmed, they can be tired, or they can just be frustrated. And they they want to get those emotions out, they want to get those feelings out. And from the program standpoint, the program is looking at the business aspect of it and what they can offer, but also understanding that they can't make it individualized for one person and they have to do what's for the greater good of all across the board. But if both sides could just take a minute to step back and consider each other's perspective, I think it makes that collaboration just that much easier. You know, one thing I would leave with families and the advice that I would offer is that, you know, enjoy the present, enjoy the moment. But if it's something that you're passionate about, just do it. Just step out there and do it. So often we hold back because we're fearful of what's unknown or what could be. But you never realize just how much what you have to say or what you're doing is touching the next person and helping the next family. So just do it.